And welcome to the loading screen for the first game of the day. No, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We're in the map is Frost, and I am incredibly excited to finally be bringing you game number one here at the stage two qualifiers, spawning in the bottom right hand position as the red Protoss player. We have none other than Mana. And going up against him, representing Team Liquid.net, an incredible fan favorite, and a player a lot of people are hoping will be able to go incredibly far today. It is none other than the little one, TLO. And I think for, for TLO especially, TLO and Hasswabs, it would be really, really awesome to qualify for I Am Cologne because it's kind of the home tournament, you know? It's the I Am that takes place in Germany. They're both from Germany, and it's just a place where they're... they're real life family and friends I guess you could say yeah. just come and cheer them on so it, it's always really really awesome to have an opportunity to play in an environment like that so uh, I can definitely imagine that the motivation is pretty high but Mana also is gonna be very heavily motivated to do well he was recently released from Mouse Sports and is looking for a new team so qualifying through this kind of a tough bracket would definitely be a, a nice way to sort of say to everyone guys I'm not just a name I can still play this game and uh, you need Mana, as he has on his Twitter tag. Yeah, Mana, just an incredibly talented player. I mean, you don't get to his position and get uh, tournaments under your belt without, of course, exhibiting such talent in the first place. So really looking forward to seeing what he can show us here and hopefully just attract a little bit of extra attention uh, from teams that might be considering picking up an additional player here. Now, TLO, uh, spawning in the top right position, will be able to get his Overlord down and scout the first opportunity of Mana as well. If he's able to turn that back at exactly the right time, there's a chance Mana won't see it, but of course he heads into the base, and then Mana immediately knows where his opponent is as well. Yeah, uh, so basically they're not cross or anything, so it's not going to take a particularly long time for them to scout out where one another are, and that's just going to happen right about now. Uh, yep. Going for the pool just before the hatch as well is TLO. Just, uh, very, very standard. Yep. Very, very chilled out here at the moment. We'll spot the cybernetics code going down after the gateway as well. So uh, neither player really expecting anything out of the ordinary here, and we can see Mana immediately sending a pro up to the top right. Yeah, he pretty much just wants to confirm he knows exactly what's going on. He needs to see if it's a hatch first, he needs to see if it's a pool first, he needs to see if maybe it's something crazy like a three hatch before pool. Uh, TLO looks like he is going to be going for a pretty quick third hatch, but after pool being before even his first hatchery, this isn't super incredibly crazy, crazy greedy, will die to anything kind of a build, so... Uh, Mana can't really do much about this right now, he's just going to realize, okay, this is what's happening, gonna put down his own nexus, and may look to punish this with a little bit of pressure coming off of those two bases. Yeah, that's uh, certainly a viable option for him here, seeing the third hatch go down early, of course, not the reason there's nothing he can do about it is because by that point, the spawning pool is already up, and there are a couple of links out on the field, so attempting to stick some pylons uh, down next to the third base could get picked off significantly more easily than if TLO, for example, went three hatch before pool. So now he's in a situation where he knows TLO's gonna be droning up as hard as he possibly can for the next couple of minutes. We'll see if Mana chooses to use that opportunity to try and squeeze in a bit of pressure as he starts his wall off at the natural. It's gonna be between like now and the next 30 seconds that we find out just what he's doing, but we have seen Chrono Boost going down on the cybernetics core, so it does look like it's definitely gonna be some pressure. The question I have, is it gonna be three gates or four gates? We have three gates up so far. It's not really all that rare though to see a Protoss player hide a fourth gateway in the main base. Mm. Um, looks like it is just gonna be three for now and a Stargate coming up behind that, yeah. so. Yeah. That's right, that's gonna be his tech path of choice at the moment. Um, so just going to be the three gateways. We'll be able to apply pressure. This isn't something that's designed to do game-ending damage or anything like that. But, oh, I do love this from TLO. Sneaking a Zergling into the main base, making sure it doesn't attack anything. Still, only now is Mana alerted to the presence of that Zergling, which spots absolutely everything. He knows there are three gateways. He knows there's a Stargate. If he gets a, he gets a probe to boot as well, that's huge. Yeah, this is actually very sloppy control from Mana so far. He's not doing anything about this Zergling in his base, but he is harassing the third, trying to take that on down. But the Ling gets out from the main, and it looks like another probe is actually going to go down by the looks of it. So two probes already if this goes down. A huge little win for TLO. And uh, just like little things like that are really, really, really bad for the just the mindset of the player who's sort of the victim of that. But meanwhile, over at the third, this is the big story that's going on right now. There's a lot of Lings already out, no speed or anything like that. But only four zealots in the mothership core. It looks like TLO has enough. The full surround, and that is the recall forced. Yeah. And wow, he he not only holds that base, but he also manages to get those couple of kills. Three worker kills total for TLO so far. And 
Mana going to be set a little bit back by that. Yeah, he's not going to be happy about that at all. He's going to be at least pleased that he saw that many Zerglings forced out of TLO to save the third base. But the fact that he lost the workers in the meantime while that was happening as well, that can't have been a morale boost for him whatsoever. The worker count currently stands at 38 to 29 in favor of our Zerg player. And TLO now seems to be the one putting on a little bit of pressure right now. He's got a couple of lings just scouting out by the third base and the rest of his ling pack just scouting for proxies might be able to park himself outside the natural so he can spot any incoming attacks. But meanwhile, we have the Oracle for Mana moving on across. I find it kind of interesting that he went in with the Oracle before the Zealots coming in. He will be able to kill a couple of probes, but only two so far. And the Oracle taking a lot of hull damage. It's going to be really, really difficult for him to continue putting on the pressure with a, only a combined total of 104 health once the shields regenerate. And, I mean, Mana's just not getting the pressure done that he wants to, but he is getting a Void Ray out now. And generally, that does signify that he may well go for a very quick third here. And here comes the Oracle into the main base. It's got about half of his shields back up. There is a Spore Crawler inside the mineral line. There has to be careful. Takes one shot from not able to collect an additional probe, uh, drone rather. And oh, really, that is a sad, sad Oracle there. Going home with only two kills. Um, it is still alive though. Mana will be able to use it for future attacking purposes. But for now at least, the harassment is over and TLO is just sitting pretty. Yeah, he is. He's very, very comfortable. He's up to about 52 drones, still five more in production. He's grabbing his first upgrade. He's getting the plus one carapace attack. Roach Warren going to be finishing up as well. Uh, I'm kind of interested to see what tech path Tilo's opting for, uh, or what he's going to opt for, rather. He's getting the Roach speed, but he's also getting, okay, Burrow coming out as well. And he's going up to six gases, which is a little weird for just a uh, very, very Roach heavy play. Third next hmm. is coming on in for Mana here, though. All right, so we'll keep an eye and see uh, just how Roach Heavy this actually is going to be. Like you said, six gases being taken now. Um, TLO admittedly doesn't have much of either minerals or gas at the moment, keeping that very low. Mana, on the other hand, 700 gas in the bank. So, uh, needs to get a couple more of those minerals, and I'll be looking forward to see how he chooses to spend that, how he shapes up his army composition. Like you mentioned, of course, Void Ray is incredibly gas heavy. Could we be seeing that in a bit? I'm actually, what I'm waiting for is like Mana just to bank up about 3,000 gas and then in the late game just warp in about 15 DTs in Tilo's base. That so sounds totally meta to me. <laughs> uh, well, the lanes are going to be able to just scout around here, confirming the existence of the Void Ray, the Nexus, all that stuff. Tilo. Not really looking to do, he's, he can't really do much aggressively with these lings. They're just not really going to be able to break through the walls, break through the cannons. And there's a spire coming up behind this for TLO. So this could be two things. This could be him going for some corruptors to help deal with Colossi. Uh, or this could just be him saying, I'm going to muta switch. And I really hope it's a muta switch because I really, really like mutas. Yeah, this, this uh, I think they're good. Could be incredibly fun here. We see the probe transfer now going over to the third base for Mana. Uh, continuing to make a couple more Void Rays. 12 roaches at a time popping out from TLO. And the Oracle is still scouting on the edge of creep to try and figure out what's going on. The Spire has not been scouted. In fact, the Roach Warren also has not been scouted. Um, but, uh, well, soon there'll be a face full of roaches to confirm the existence of that. There is a hallucinated Phoenix. There is a whole bunch of roaches and Mana now knows an attack is incoming. Mana doesn't have any units. He's got six Zealots, five Sentries, two Voiders, an Oracle, and a Mothership Core, which may be enough to hold this, but the Mothership Core is so out of position that it won't be able to launch the Photon Overcharge for quite a while. The Void Rays are starting to go to town against the Roaches, but they are closing the distance with the Nexus at the very least. All right, are we going... Is this going to be able to do too much damage before everything, even, oh, even the Oracle, uh, trying to get in on the action here, and Vision being used to prevent those roaches from getting away from burrowing, and it looks like this is going to be enough to push TLO back. This is like that StarCraft episode with the Void Rays, um, except they're really not doing as much damage nearly as often as YouTube would like us to believe here as the roaches come and continue to pile on the paint, killing off an awful lot of units here. These Honey Badger roaches do not care that the Void Rays are doing a lot of damage to them. They are absolutely disrupting this third base. Are they going for the next? Are are they going to go for the workers? It looks like the workers first are the units that will be going down. I like the decision to go after the workers. He doesn't have enough to guarantee a kill on the Nexus, and even if the Nexus survives with very, very low health, obviously that's still a Nexus that he's going to be able to mine from. So Mana's able to clean that up, but Tilo does do a little bit of damage here. He's up to a total of 14 worker kills, but overall that was not the greatest of trades. The overall units lost are at 14 probes, 8 zealots, 2 stalkers, and 3 sentries against 2 drones, 28 lings, and 32 roaches. So a very expensive loss for, for TLO there, but the Muta switch is now here. We have eight on the map, five more in production, plus one attacks well underway. There is one Stargate up for Mana that has been cranking out those Void Rays, so he will be able to get one Phoenix at a time, but uh, the, other, the additional Stargates are starting only now, which is a little bit late, but 
one Muta actually going down for free there, so yep. TLO needs to try to get that death ball of Mutas. He needs to try to get the critical mass, but he's actually not going past 12, so I think what he wants to do is force an overcommitment of Phoenixes and then go into a Hydras. Needs to just be a little bit careful here. I think what you're suggesting is absolutely right. He got the Hydra list and at the same time as the Infestation Pit here, and I think uh, trying to get Mana to overcommit and then tech searching seems to be the uh, pattern here from TLO. He has, by the way, taken a base over here at the 2 o'clock position as well. And he's now switching into an awful lot of Ling Hydra. We can see the 2-2 two -two coming mm. out for the Lings, the Hydra upgrades, but still getting those flyer attacks for the Muters. So he's preparing for that switch as we speak. Yeah, this is actually really nice. Uh, I don't think he's going to make any more Mutas until like the very, very late game after he loses an entire maxed out army that's very, very uh, high tech. Then he may go for a straight up uh, Muter Remax again, but Basically, his entire plan was to fly in with 8 Mutas, he's got 12 total at this point, flies in with more Mutas, so it looks like he's still making even more of them. And as a result, Mana's completely... he's, he's just completely wrong with what he thinks is doing. He thinks he's just spamming air, and Mana's up to already 6 Phoenixes with 3 more in production. Yeah. That's 18 supply that's going to do not all that much. Oh, but he has realized and he cancels the Phoenixes. Oh, very, very smart play from there. He's still going for the Onion Pulse Crystals, of course, and the plus one, because... Uh... To be honest, later on in the game, if another Muta Switch comes in, it's beneficial to have those upgrades as well. I love what TLO is doing with these Burrowed Zerglings, by the way. One just outside the third base location, trying to spot if any massive ground army is coming through as well. Really, really liking this uh, scouting coming out from it. Looks like the War Prism over here on the left-hand side is going to bite the dust, courtesy of these Mutalisks here. And the Phoenixes are coming in to try and clean them up, but sadly, just a little bit too far away. Yeah, the these three Phoenixes may actually... Find those Mutas, oh, and they really don't see them, but uh, TLO is maxed now, he's getting three Vipers, and he's basically gonna go, four Vipers even, wow. He's basically going to go with this 206 Supply Army, and uh, he's just gonna try to get as much damage done as he can, he's gonna wanna at least get the third here, he's gonna wanna be able to pull in all those Colossi, and just basically trade as efficiently as possible against Mana before deciding what he wants to remax on next. If he takes out all of the air, all of the Phoenixes, a lot of the anti-air, he may well go into a Muta remax, uh, yeah. And if he just takes out the Colossi and leaves a lot of the air, he'll probably go back into the hider based composition. Yeah, he does need to grab um, the gases as additional bases pretty quickly here, especially in the 2 o'clock position. TLO, uh, if he wants, for example, to do that Muta Remax, will require uh, a bit of additional gas. A couple of scouts going into the main base just to check out what TLO is doing here. The Phoenix is still trying his best to keep uh, the Zerg player contained, but to be honest, ooh, are we going to see this Evolution Chamber die off? Yes, we are. Huddy Badger uh Vipers don't care. Yeah, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Nope. Uh, he's got the... he's. I think he's already got all the upgrades he wants for now. Um, no, he's at 2-2 two -two with plus 1 range attacks, but he has 3 uh, evolution chambers in his main, so he's perfectly fine. Ultralist Cavern's about to finish up. That's going to open another potential Remax tech path, and this is what's really, really cool about late game Zerg. You just get all the tech paths, because building individual buildings doesn't cost that much, and then all of a sudden you can do whatever you want, and here comes TLO. And where's the army of Mono? Okay, it's up there on the high ground. Not the greatest of positions, though. Void Tila Racing could Colossi. Get into a good yeah, where are the Vipers? We're waiting for the Vipers on the Voiders, waiting for them on the Colossi. Looks like TLO just patiently waiting until he gets into the kind of position he wants. He wants to lure the Protoss down to open ground to fight him there. Is he going to be able to do this? A gateway going down. Not too many units being committed, just a couple of muters behind harassing the workers there. It looks like TLO just patiently waiting for the perfect opportunity. Is he going to be coming in now? There goes the Viper on the Colossus, but it's no good. And another feedback gets on one of those Vipers as well. Two Vipers remain with energy. All three Colossi still stand. Another feedback goes down. Only one Viper still has energy. He actually abducts the wrong unit of Oidre coming in. Doesn't even kill it. So overall, a good army trade for Mana. But TLO grabbing about 16 more worker kills in the process. So he can be pretty happy with that. But Mana still sitting at the same worker count as TLO is. 66, actually 68 for Mana. So he's in the lead. And TLO needed to do more damage at that attack than he actually did. The Vipers survive at the very least, with the exception of one, so they will be able to reconsume on that evolution chamber and regenerate their energy quite quickly. But TLO is not in the greatest of positions right now, economically speaking. He doesn't have a huge bank, he's got some good mineral count, but not really any gas to speak of. 
Yeah. A couple of Ultras coming in, but only three. The the Void Raid Colossus composition coming out for Mana there, it just felt like TLO was a little bit less confident against that than he um, than he perhaps could have been in that engagement. For example, he had so much energy on the Vipers, only ended up using a couple of Abducts, and like you said, they were just a little bit inaccurate as well. And uh, he was also a little bit worried about feedback. He's coming in again with a bunch of Roaches to try and see if he can get some Ninja damage done here. But what could TLO have done better in that specific engagement to try and squeeze an advantage out of it? As this Nexus looks like it's going to go down. Well, before we talk about that, we have another engagement coming down at the fourth base. Another abduct comes down, one of the Colossi, trying to abduct it further, trying to kill it. Three abducts to kill just one Colossus. Not the greatest uh, energy usage, but the Nexus did go down, as you pointed out. Now TLO's going to retreat. Uh, back to what you asked, though. I think what TLO could have done better is that Mana was completely out of position on that high ground, and TLO, what he could have done is moved into a pretty good concave position on the low ground, mm -hmm. and that may have been a really good opportunity for him to actually kill stuff off. And going for a couple of abducts on the Colossi earlier on and focusing them down, that's really how you want to start the engagement. You want to take out that AoE damage as quickly as possible. And as you said, TLO just kind of sat there with the Vipers, being a little too careful, not wanting to get them into feedback range. So, overall... He just didn't take the engagement all that well first uh, the first time, but this second engagement where he was able to pick off a Colossus and a Nexus, not bad at all. Well, he's got, um, he's starting to remax now with Ultralis and Hydralis being his main weapons of choice by the looks of things. Uh, we are continuing to get upgrades from both players. We have got the plus two ground weapons as well uh, out for Protoss, and I believe Mana, yes, he's in the process of just about completing plus three. Now, note that there uh, are no armor upgrades on just yet as TLO now starts moving out across the map. Fantastic usage of the Oracle there in Vision, allowing him to spot exactly the movements of this army. The problem is these units are just so strong. The composition that TLO has, the Ultras will shred through so much stuff that it's very, very hard for Mana to find a good way to split his army. He's trying to do that right now, but with Blinding Clouds going down on the cannons, it looks like the third base is going to go down once again, Jorisar. And a ridiculous number of Voidways attempting to defend here. Mana actually did a good job defending at his fourth, but the third base, unfortunately, like you said, is toast once more. It's probably going to be immediately remade by Mana. Bear in mind, those are a lot of costly units that TLO lost there as well. A decent number of Ultralists did go down in that fight. If we take a look uh, quickly at the resources lost to have, TLO has lost 16,500 to 8,500 right now. So uh, while TLO was successful in taking out the third base, it did come at a cost. Meanwhile, we have a gigantic Warband of Zealots here at the fifth base of TLO. It's not quite engaging. But meanwhile, another attack at the fourth base of Mana. And as you said... TLO is trading a lot of expensive units for Nexuses, and the problem with that is that Mana is not actually losing any army. His army is getting stronger and stronger. Whoa. In come these Zealots, but that's a lot of spines, and I don't actually see this doing much. Yeah, I get the impression that uh, TLO wants this base to survive. I don't know. Call it, a, call it a sixth sense, if you like, but these Zealots are not going to be able to get too much done at all. It looks like the spine crawlers are definitely going to win here. Another attack coming in at the third base. It will get forced to cancel, this time with Lings. Very smart choice, knowing that the Void Rays were there, by the way. Knowing it would take them quite a long time to kill off a pack of Lings, continuing to disrupt the economy of mana here. TLO really playing for the late game. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, TLO is doing very, very well. Kind of a, not, not the ultimate composition as it doesn't contain swarm hosts, but an incredibly strong army. He's got five Ultralisks on the ground. He's got four or five Broodlords in the air, and he's got a whole bunch of Infestors as well. He's going to be up to five, bro uh, four Broodlords, five Ultras, ten Infestors, and... That's a pretty hard army to actually beat. The problem is that, or the potential problem, depending on the fungals, is that he only really has 15 hydras and no real extra queens. So it's going to be very difficult to deal with this huge number of void rays. Oh, oh God! Broodlords. Oh, good God. Hey, that's a pretty good fungal. But you know what? You've just lost one broodlord and potentially are going to lose another two. Are we going to get the chain fungals all on this cliff, though? That is absolutely huge. We need quite a lot more fungals to kill off these void rays. And we are indeed going to use the mass recall. Pretty sensible option there. We'll allow them to regenerate their shields. And he did effectively get one and, I guess, almost two and three broodlords for free. Yeah, I think the biggest thing right now is that I, I feel like... TLO should be adding in more Queens, because Queens are transfused. They do so well with both Ultras and Broodlords, and with a composition that contains both of them, I just feel like that's just the sensible choice, but instead what he's going for is just mass, 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 and Festers going up to 15. It's almost like this is Wings of Liberty. You just have a just a mass army of Infestors supported by Broodlords, I guess. And uh, meanwhile, continued upgrades. We've got plus 
three already, plus three air attacks coming in for mana. Yep. And a couple of Tempests just finished, and those will be able to deal with the Broodlords very, very fast. That's right. The, uh, those Tempests are going to be incredibly useful indeed, possibly uh, using Hallucinated Phoenixes to maybe gain some vision while the Tempests sort of fire on those units from afar. Looks like the Corrupts are coming. You're trying to pick off a Tempest. Will they be able to? TLO fancies his chances. Here comes a Viper with an Abduct. It looks like at least one Tempest is definitely going to go down. And a uh, nice little move there from TLO. Meanwhile, he's got some Lings and Hydras coming in to the bottom. They're going to walk straight into what will otherwise be known as a Protoss Wall of Death, a.k.a. Colossi and Archons. Not the kind of army composition that Hydras really want to be fighting at all. No, all the Lings pretty much died. Only one Hydra going down, though. So actually using the line of Sight Blockers pretty cutely to be able to deal with all three of the Archons very cost efficiently. Ah, uh, one of them looks like it, no, it won't get away, but it, it does successfully bait the Hydras into the rest of the army. Four Archons going down, so... Either way, not a bad trade for TLO. Uh, TLO sitting at only 30, uh, at only 170 supply, 30 supply under max. Adding on nine swarm hosts. Now he's going for that ultimate army. Going broodlord before swarm hosts. Something that isn't all that common, but yeah. It's, it is, uh, it, it'll still get you where you need to go in the end, I guess. And he's still got, don't forget, um, all those infestors with his army composition as well. He's actually done a great job of keeping those alive. He really used the cliff area well, attacking this fourth base of mana. And neither player, really, at this uh, later stage of the game, have been looking to add additional bases. So if I wonder if this is going to... Yes, there is a drone heading up to the top left for TLO to add another hatchery. He is thinking about income in the long term, should this... Uh, should the situation arise for a little bit longer, but Mana at the moment... Oh, he's got a probe going down as well, so it looks like both players are looking to expand to the opposite halves of the map. But the bigger news is that TLO is going up to a massive count of 10 Spore Crawlers to the east of Mana's base, and this is going to make it incredibly difficult to assault those uh, Swarm Hosts. Any Observers that get close are just going to die, and without detection, that's going to be very, very hard to break. A one cannon going down for free already, and now... The free units are starting to rain down terror from above. Only nine of them at the moment, but more are being added on. That's right, a ridiculous number of free units coming in now. We Do we have Broodlord support? We do, because why the heck not? Here come the Locusts, here come the infesta uh, infestated, infested Terrans, rather. And here, uh, oh, potentially come the Broodlings as well. It looks like Mana's deciding, you know what, I'd like to go for this, but walk straight into a huge fungal. Immediate use of the Mass Recall, realizing, oh, that's actually what I'm dealing with here. And Mana now has to come up with an action plan. He needs a lot of AoE damage, and he needs it very, very quickly. Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing right now is that he, he just doesn't have a Colossus count he needs to push through here. Although, there's not that... This isn't that scary an army of TLO oh, over to the right side. 7 o'clock base, gone, and didn't get cancelled. And that is why there is not a giant army over here for TLO. His army is split, trying to do as much stuff as he can. But honestly, I feel like Mana could break this if he, if he had some good, uh, some good feedbacks there on the Infestors. The good Fungals are going to be hard to deal with, but there just isn't that much damage output in this army, there's just not that many swarm <laughs> And we just witnessed two zealots chase two ultralisks back into the wall of spine crawlers. Hey, I guess if you can get support somewhere, you might as well do it, right? Another engagement coming in. A huge uh, ballsy fungal coming in there from one of the infestors. TLO microing these infestors fantastically, trying to get those chain fungals off. And it looks like yet another recall used on that mothership core. So uh, TLO not able to get the chains off. But at the he's just whittling down energy on the mothership core. Mana can't afford yeah. to do this forever. Yeah, Mana, Mana will not be able to do another recall for a long, 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 long time. And that means the Fungals are going to be very, very dangerous here. More Stalkers being warped in. What are they doing? They're actually blinking forward, trying to get a Viper. That is actually a good trade overall. Um, okay, not if he loses all of them for free, but it's not a terrible trade, I guess, gas-wise. Mm. And here comes the other army, Army B from TLO, the Ultralisk Hydra Force, just making sure that 7 o'clock never actually gets completed. And uh, Mana is going to be having a little bit of post-traumatic stress disorder, probably remembering his game against Fire Cake right about now. <laughs> Does that mean we have to start ordering pizza in a bit? And it looks like uh, Mana... No, I, don't, I don't think it's going to last that long, to be honest. No, uh, Mana does end up losing this fourth base. He is down to three bases now. TLO coming in from two sides. The Ultras and Hydras off to the left, successfully picking apart everything on the left-hand side of the map. And the Swarm Host successfully as well, taking apart this fourth base on the right-hand side. Mana is between a rock and a hard place. He has got some minerals and gas in the bank, but his income is going to start to dwindle compared to TLO. Yeah, I mean, even if you look at his bank, it's it's a respectably eh, average, not too great, but not awful bank for mana. And then you look at TLO, and he's just like, he's UBS. Wow. He's got a gigantic bank of almost, of a combined 6k, more of it in gas than minerals, actually, and that's another thing that's going to be really nice for him. Looks like these units are all going to die, though. 
So what you're saying is we need a rogue trader to come along and kill off TLO's bank. I mean, it could happen, and uh, like you say, the actual army in a straight-up fight from Mana here it would just do an incredible job against pretty much everything that wasn't sieging up his fourth base. The problem is TLO at the same time is just continuing to move forward, and soon he'll be setting upon the third. Uh, I'm interested to see what TLO decides to remax on here. He's got about 30 supply empty. He's going for a few lings. 12 Vipers! Okay, he's cancelling a whole bunch of them now. Cancels six wow. of the Vipers. <laughs> six Vipers is still a pretty large number, larger than you usually see. But I guess that, that's kind of like the maximum number you want in late game. 12 would have been just trolly. But uh, you don't want to start trolling around in a game that's actually pretty important. So... Even if you do feel like you're really far ahead, we have seen some very embarrassing throws. All right, Mana coming back to the right-hand side now. That's why TLO decided to move back with the uh, with the Swarm Host. We have Envision here. We have a decent number of Phoenixes. We have Dark Templar as well, trying to grant vision, by the way, to these Tempests. So Mana's idea is to try and pick apart these units on the ground. The problem is TLO is embedded in, in approximately a million Spore Crawlers, which makes this incredibly difficult. And yeah. that's why Mana is going around the side. It's really hard to push through that with this kind of an army as well, because there's a whole bunch of air, and even the Colossi get hit by Spore Crawlers, so there's not really all that much that the Spore Crawlers don't shoot. Uh, they're, they're almost, they're, they're more effective than Spine Crawlers by a wide margin right now. And, oh, the Fungals! Ooh, fantastic, he needed those really to delay for time, because, oh my god, fantastic stories. Mana actually got almost on top of those Swarm Hosts before they were able to get borrowed. So TLO may be taken a little bit by surprise here, having to use a lot of those fungals to slow this down, and is Mana gonna, with this counter push, bring some sort of result out of this game? Blinding clouds coming down from everywhere, spells being cast from all directions now, and it looks like TLO down to 125 supply, Mana still at 150, is he gonna be able to do this? Well, Mana's ground army looks like it's almost been cleaned up here, but the air army still reigns supreme. Corruptors are not what you need to deal with this kind of a composition. The Voiders are just far, far, far too strong. And this surprising attack from Mana may have been just what he needs. Only nine Corruptors on the field, six more in production, one of them going down almost immediately. The overcharge on the Void Rays. Very oh few will go down, if any. Two will die, and G Mana G takes the game. Wow, 1-0 Mana.